China's Belt and Road Global Initiative is expanding from infrastructure to the digital industry, healthcare and wellness, as well as renewables, among others. With $100 billion to bankroll this extension of its worldwide economic campaign. This vow from Chinese President Xi Jinping, even world leaders like Russian President Vladimir Putin and the rest, put in a good word for the program. As we hear more from our Mark Fitalko. World leaders, heads of state, and representatives from over 140 countries have gathered for the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation here in Beijing, China. Chinese President Xi Jinping led the opening ceremony at the Great Hall of the People. In his keynote speech, she emphasized the importance of the Belt and Road Initiative toward progress and modernization of participating countries. We have learned that humankind is a community with a shared future. China can only do well when the world is doing well. When China does well, the world will get even better. Through Belt and Road cooperation, China is opening its door even wider to the world. Meanwhile, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres also asserted the importance of infrastructure development under the BRI framework. Without infrastructure, including infrastructure, there can be no development. And without development support, many developing countries will be starved of the infrastructure they desperately need. The BRI was launched in 2013 with the aim to build roads, bridges, ports, and railways. A decade after, Chinese President Xi said the initiative now expands to new industries such as healthcare, low-carbon energy, digital economy, and innovation. Philippine Ambassador to China Jaime Flor Cruz lauded that BRI has evolved from physical infrastructure to digital space, which he said is beneficial to the Philippines. Those are very important, not just for, uh, for China, but also for, for countries like the Philippines, because what we want are uh, projects that, are, that we need for our nation building to make our country uh, stronger, to make our people more prosperous, and to live in peace. Russian President Vladimir Putin also attended the forum and delivered a speech. This is his first international event since the Russia-Ukraine war. We have repeatedly pointed out that Russia and China, as well as the majority of states of the world, share the aspiration for equal and mutually beneficial cooperation in order to reach comprehensive sustainable and long-term economic progress. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi has this warning to certain countries that make unilateral and arbitrary decisions against other nations amid existing global challenges. What we stand against are unilateral sanctions, economic coercion, and decoupling and supply chain disruption. The gathering of leaders was held amid the ongoing war between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas in Gaza. The UN Secretary General strongly condemned the killing of hundreds of Palestinian civilians in a strike on a hospital in Gaza. He had this appeal to both sides. I call for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to provide sufficient time and space to help realize my two appeals and to ease the epic human suffering we are witnessing. Mark Fetalko for The Nation, Beijing, China.